Yeah, so you have, I never thought of it that way, that the middle and lower class, you could say, is getting attacked from both sides. And the quantitative easing is, is, is widening the disparity between rich and poor. So they're getting pushed lower down, but then they're also facing job loss by technological disruption. So they're getting squeezed oh. out. But all of these, at least on a fiat currency standard, most of this gain or productivity surplus, economic surplus is accruing to the top, to assets. Yeah. 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 So the, in, in that world, your time is expanding. And so this leads, that's why it's such a dystopian outcome, right? It leads to where one group of people hold all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and you can see, you look back through history to see, um, is there, if, if the wealthy believe that they're immune from this, when the game board's ripped up, right. who gets attacked? That's right. right. And if you, and, and that, that becomes the lightning rod and everything else. So, so I don't, I don't care who you are in the system. You should, you should want fair rules for how a system is designed. Um, because, uh, because uh, rules that reinforce what ha is happening now and pretty, pretty ugly one way. Yeah. 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 It seems like it's just a cert a virtual certainty. Nothing's a certainty, but as close as you can be to a certainty that it collapses, it's not sustainable. So then the question is what's next, what comes yeah. up. Um, that's super interesting. So yeah. one, one thing you might want to, we might want to chat about a little bit just as we're uh, going in. So because, because, we're so far past the point of rescue of the existing system. Mm -hmm. What what could some outlier events look like for the existing system? Um, and it, so so if people are making a bet on Bitcoin, it, you and I are both. We believe in the asset class. We believe long term in the asset class. We're maximalists. Everything else. Um, and so, but I will say this too: if it went to zero, uh, it would be a bad day. But I would actually care way more about what it means if it went to, and I don't think that that's going to happen, what it means for the existing system, because I don't think there's another way out. Mm -hmm. I think it is the best path for, for a transition to where we're going. The most peaceful path is Bitcoin. Well, I so, think if we didn't have it right now, like the 2021 post COVID scenario we're in, it'd be a pretty bleak situation. Yeah, because where are you, you're you're looking, what, what you're doing is you're you're looking to to move to safety. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find find where are you going to get out of this system and protect your money for safety because you know what's uh, what's going to happen. Yeah. And but but now let's say the, the existing uh, as, as system and, and kind of we know it's. We know that you're building in more fragility into the system with that each step. Yeah. And, it's, and, and the consequences of that fragility, not just for the system itself, but this second order consequences for populations and everything else are building more. It's like a powder keg wanting to go off. Yeah. Right? The, and you can feel it ev everywhere. And at some point it goes off. And, and like, so you know that this is happening. So if, you, if you're in uh, the Fed and you know that this is happening, is there, do you bluff and let interest rates go up and, and collapse and blow off the steam and let stuff collapse and then go back in and save the banks and restart the whole thing over again? Now, I don't think that that is possible today. Um, and when I say possible, it's anything's possible. I don't think it's a probability today, but, but I, I, when I would, would look at that type of game, because that's what happened in 2008. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And a whole bunch of people were wiped out in 2008. Yeah. And then you went in and restarted the system again and it could, and it got ever more fragile and ever more everything else. But that's what happened in 2008. So could that happen today? And when what would it happen in a, in that event to today? You know, if that happened, a lot of people would be fra uh, scared. Fra but you, the U.S. dollar would get really strong. Other currencies would get we, we could be uh, raced to safety and in, in, in that. And 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 in that environment, Bitcoin would fall as well. Yeah, everything. Yeah. asset prices would would fall as people went for safety and tried to get cash and that would be to me 
an incredible buying opportunity Bitcoin if yep. that were to happen. Um, because you know it has to, you, you know the system hasn't changed, but you know you're blowing off steam. And, and so, um, and, the, and the worry I think they would have from doing it today um, it is the, the collapse could be so severe so fast, you might not be able to stop it. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and reset because you're, you're, the whole thing is being kept afloat by more and more printing. Um, but uh, so, so even though go- governments would want to do that, let, let that uh, happen, I don't think like the bond market m- pricing moving up in the bond market, every other uh, prices would fall so fast and, the, and people would see what was there all the way along. Right. No, I think it's a, it's a great point. Would perhaps be the ultimate Bitcoin buying or not the ultimate, but the last great Bitcoin buying opportunity there would ever be. And it might not, and it might not happen, but it's, uh, but if that was the case. Hypothetically, if there was this yeah. massive uh, liquidity shock, and I guess maybe you'd say the Fed drags their feet to respond, to let things, whatever, to, to vindicate their existence and their response, right? What is it all? It's in dictate, the, the dictator's playbook, never let a good crisis go to waste. Right. Exactly. Because everybody would be saying you have to do something. You have to do something. Exactly. Which, 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 exactly. And because you couldn't let the economy collapse completely and every financial s- s- uh, institution collapse right. and run on banks, you wouldn't be able to. So the, the population would race to the Fed yes. to help us. To, and, and, and the same thing that created the whole problem in the beginning uh, gets kind of we save the day again. Yeah, and the Fed would take that opportunity very likely to amend the Federal Reserve Act, probably making their balance sheet legal tender where they just start paying government bills directly, helicopter money like we've never seen it. And so yeah, buying Bitcoin in that short term liquidity deflationary shock would then be, you know, over the next few years, all of that central bank balance sheet expansion would, I mean, that would be the hyperinflation event without a doubt. Once, yeah. once, a, once a central bank, specifically the Fed, turns its balance sheet into legal tender and starts paying government expenses directly, right. we get into pure helicopter money injections, the dollar will inflate, right. which is no stop. Right. That's right. when it's Bitcoin, right? So if you could buy it in the deflationary shock and own it for the inflationary aftermath, that's the ultimate. And, and, last, uh, and last February, March, that's what actually happened, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, right. And and uh, and that's that's every asset fell short term, and then 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 you had this massive easing that's pushing yeah. everything everything up. So so could there could there be something like that? I do see it as a, probably a low probability event because I don't know if they would risk um, what could could happen. But but in this type of market, uh, it, who knows? Yeah, it's hard to say, and it's interesting too because uh, you made this point in your book that. Every incremental dollar of debt engenders less marginal GDP growth. So it's the right. stimulus is less effective over time. They've yeah. spent all, all of the central bank levers are pushed to the absolute maximum right now. We're at the zero bound, you know, zero reserve requirements, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, what? <laughs> there's nothing left to do at that point except just quite literally open the floodgates. Well, well, that was one of the things. What I said. So people talk a lot about the debt, but they don't connect the dots to what was driving it, right? Mm-hmm. And so when, when, and and we we talked a little bit about this already, but but that was one of the for me in writing the book and researching the book. I knew something, I or I felt that because this is something the technology. I couldn't square the circle and say 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 why is everything I'm doing into all the technology companies providing more abundance at lower prices? And I can see it all around me. Why aren't prices falling everywhere? And, and, and because technology is moving into every industry, so prices should be falling uh, every, everywhere. And so that is something I talked about a long time, but when I actually did the research for the book and I found out that, uh, that 200, the world had $250 trillion of debt before COVID and, against an $80 trillion economy. That is 
take your breath away enough. Like that's a big number. And that's what everybody talked about. A lot of people talked about the DAPT, yeah. but it wasn't that that took my breath away. It was, it was 185 trillion of the 250 came in the last 20 years right. as, as, as you would expect if technology is moving faster and faster the other way. Yeah. Right. right. You would, you would, you would expect something to be able to offset that. And, and why the Fed doesn't see it and why, why they're, they're, you, you could argue that the way they measure inflation is all wrong and everything else, but, but they're pouring money into a hole yes. that's moving into technology faster. And overall inflation isn't moving, moving higher because technology is moving faster the other way. Yeah. 